in my opinion, I think they're just feeding into what they think is going to make enough money, uh, what, is, what they think is going to generate e enough ratings. Um, I don't think it's a knock against uh, female sports, but when you look at the, the grand scheme of things in terms of the sports that actually bring in more money and things of that nature, a lot of it is, is male-dominated sports. If you look at ESPN, of course, uh, their, their top stories are, are, for the most part, all uh, male-dominated sports. That doesn't mean that the, the women's game in whatever particular sport it is is not as good or is not as as much quality in there it's not as much talent in that it just means that the, the the people who were able to make the decision said okay we'll focus on um, the the sports and the teams that more people care about more people actually pay money to see pay money to watch um, and in a lot of cases that does not bode well for uh, female sports uh, WNBA they got their, their highest ratings in, in the WNBA Finals, uh, Atlanta Dream and the Minnesota Lynx, but um, that game was played uh, on a Sunday, uh, on an NFL Sunday, uh, and the series started on an NFL Sunday. Um, ESPN chose NFL Sunday because their Sunday night lineup uh, competes with NBC's football lineup. So they knew a lot of their audience probably would not, uh, uh, I mean, if they had a football audience, they wouldn't be watching ESPN. So they wanted to tap into that other audience who is is tired of football, wanted something else. Well, you've got top basketball, top women's basketball in the prime time spot. So I think I think it's you can make a case saying that there's not enough women's sports being publicized, um, but at the same time, uh, a lot of a lot of the newsmakers go ahead and decide to go with. Uh, what is more popular, what has more stadiums being packed, uh, and, and, and right now it's, it's men, male sports. I think it's huge. Um, I, I, all the time when I when I go out, uh, the, the, I do get comments from people saying, "Oh, all you show is football." You know, we we want to know about you know girls volleyball. Or we want to know about girls soccer. And and I do get a chance to I do kind of have the luxury at this market because I have enough time in my sports cast to to try and and you know get to some of those games too to kind of show that our, our sports market is well rounded. It's not just football. It's not just basketball. But at the same time, we can't not cover football. We can't not cover basketball because you'd have more people complaining if we didn't cover football and basketball than we do having, you know, not covering girls' volleyball. When we are able to cover a girls' volleyball game, I think that's one of the reasons why people watch us a little bit more because we are able to go out into the community and, and cover those games and cover those, those, those students, those athletes who uh, the local community cares about and they may have a personal relationship with with them and so that's why they do watch so it's a, it's kind of a fine line you want to still cover uh female sports you want to cover some of the local local community sports that that matter to people matter to the community but at the same time you can't not cover the big sports that actually generate a lot more of the ratings I think I think the the easiest way to level it out is to actually have a, a fan base that supports that particular team, supports that particular sport. Because if 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 we see that you know uh, girls volleyball is going to be one of those that packs out the gymnasium every single every single night, every single match, then obviously we're going to make that a lot more important to our coverage. Um, if we see that. You know, we go to a, a, a girls volleyball match, and there may be ten people in the entire gym. Then, then that lets us know that the that's not really that really shouldn't be a priority in our sports coverage. If we get to it, great, but it shouldn't be a priority. If we go to an FSU football game, it's eighty three thousand people there. That lets us know that that that's kind of an important game, and we should we should you know talk about it. Um, I get that that argument a lot of times, and it's not just male and female sports. It's it's FSU and FAMU sports.
Yeah, I, I honestly feel that women are taken seriously in sports, um, but I, I think it's it's a to me I think it's a fine line. It's it, it's all on the way that that particular woman carries themselves. Like Pam Oliver is the prime example um, of she she let them know from from day one that she was not going to be a pushover. She was going to ask whatever questions she wanted to ask, and she felt like she was entitled to ask uh, the same kind of questions that all of the male reporters would ask. Um, and she, she established that early. Um, there are some female reporters that did not establish that early on and had a different kind of style. And so, some of the guys, some of the athletes, some of the coaches, some of the other reporters may have um, perceived that as just, just being around just because it's a pretty face or something along those lines. And I think female reporters or females in this industry are always going to have to um, get over that hurdle whether they get over that hurdle early on in their career or, or later on in their career, they're going to have to, they're constantly going to be scrutinized or looked at as, I wonder if they're just going to be another, another pretty face or if she actually knows what she's talking about and she actually does a good job. relate to it being a, a male dominated sport. You relate to all the teams that you've played on over the years being surrounded by nothing but guys. Um, more and more um, you're seeing there's just as much talent uh, on, on the female side of things.